Having been involved in electronics at a hobbyist level over quite a few years, I've seen things change quite dramatically. A lot of people like to say that there's been a decline, I'm guilty of it myself, a decline in the electronics industry from the 70s and the 80s, but really it, it hasn't really declined, it's just changed. Now, of course, the home electronics idea is generally for very simple devices and nearly always you can buy a somewhat better designed commercial version. Now that everything is sort of pre-manufactured and it's so cheap, the day of the electronics hobbyist is moving, it's changing. The hobby of electronics is changing over time. We're using smaller components, different assembly techniques, and people will need to learn how to use these and take advantage of them. Well, I, I would say there'd been a, a decline in the electronics um, industry in Australia. Yes, I would. Uh, it, it's noticeable uh, in, the, in the transformation of, of the new Dick Smith shops that no longer sell componentry, and that, that's only been in the last few years. Yes, there, there has been a de there has been a, a significant decline in component demand and business. And I think the reason for that is because most of the manufacturing has gone offshore. China has changed the landscape completely. Well, certainly, the demand has certainly changed. There's far less demand, especially for manufacturing, for servicing, servicing products. So spare parts for products has certainly changed, far less of it. And Australians now can buy power source, $49, grinders, $29, but they can buy all sorts of electronic things, $29, things that you couldn't even buy the components for. The fact is that China have changed the whole consumer landscape completely. New manufacturing shift to China is, is just a natural consequence of it was Japan before that and it'll be someone else probably India in the future who knows it's it's just one of those traditional shifts so I don't think the electronics industry has really declined it's just changed and shaped although it's very easy for people to say there's been a decline in the electronics industry in Australia from a very hands-off unexperienced view it's easy for people to say that I mean we don't make televisions or radios in Australia anymore why would I buy a lot local component versus a, a foreign manufactured component. If there's a significant price difference, you know, I guess there's quality, there's timeliness. I think there is a decline in the electronics industry in Australia, and I think it's, you know, a lot of it's, you know, market conditions and things, but I think there's also a belief that we can't do this here. So we have seen a decline, uh, mainly through globalisation and things like that, mainly. Globalisation was a tsunami that was going to hit anyway. I can't see that you could slice off electronics as one single industry that was harmed more or less than, you know, a bunch of others. To open up a business like Dick Smith Electronics today would be almost impossible. Globalisation is so big from all around the world. Part of this is due to changing economic circumstances. It's due to more globalisation of industry and various things like that, and centralisation of manufacturing. It's also due to a change in technology. In the 1970s and 80s, uh, enthusiasts were more inclined to make things. The level of technology and products was at the stage where uh, you could make things completely yourself. For example, surface mount components weren't prevalent. It used to be that you could build something as a hobbyist that would be pretty much the same or built to the same standard as a professional piece of equipment because it's using the same techniques. It's just parts shoved through a PCB, soldered into place. Electronic manufacturers use electronic components that don't have wire leads. They are what's called surface mount components. The parts that you worked with 15 or 20 years ago were typically called plated through hole parts. So you would bend a wire, shove it through a hole in a PCB. Parts now are designed to be assembled by robots, you know, pick and place machines. So anything you needed to make something could in fact be made by hand and that was a great benefit in making your own devices. Everything's gone down to micro components which um, I, I mean you need a, a computer or a robot to actually do what we did back in the 70s, 80s with the larger components. I mean it's just really not as possible as it used to be. Micro miniaturisation is a problem for the average hobbyist. It, it is really an area that requires a special soldering iron, it requires pliers and tweezers and a very careful hand, it requires correct temperatures. It, it, it is a complicated uh, and involved area. When I started learning, components were quite large, they're quite tangi tangible, you, you could pick them up, you didn't lose them, in the <laughs> lose them on the floor. Now, a uh, 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 surface mount, you need to pretty much use a microscope to, to see what's going on. I think because, you know, in those days, the electronic parts that you bought from a Dick Smith were the same parts that were in a latest consumer TV. So if you bought a television, you'd pretty much find the same parts in that television that were in a Dick Smith store or a, or a Tandy or one of the electronic shops. 
So the technologies were very similar. To manufacture a piece of equipment, it's very difficult to get a robot to put wires through a circuit board. It's like threading a needle through a button. What's happened now is with surface mount technology and, and large scale integrated chips and even FPGAs and things, that technology's moved well beyond. And, and so the stuff you still get in the stores is still the same type of components. But you now modern products aren't built from those components. Professional electronics is very much oriented around mass manufacturing, whereas hobbyist electronics is kits and, and one off projects. They're built from very different components and they're a bit harder to get and you got to buy them on reels of you know 10,000 or something like that and they're very tiny and I mean how's a kid build with those? They're, they're quite tough. Typical hobbyists just can't do it. You can't go down and buy a $20 soldering iron and some parts and do that sort of stuff. You need other techniques. You know you can learn how to do it but it's, it's quite a bit harder and, and the poor kid growing up in the country town now you know he goes and buys a computer and sits on that and just does some software or something and, and that becomes his his creative outlet, the same kind of creative outlet than what you did with electronics. So what's happened is that there's been this divergence between hobbyist level electronics and professional electronics. There may seem to be a divergence between hobbyists in industry in terms of the, the footprint of components they're using. For example, hobbyists naturally use through hole components because you can use them in solderless breadboards or build your own projects with protoboard. Uh, so the type of components that are in industry and the type of components that hobbyists use are very electrically, they're identical but physically they're different. However, I still believe that using surface mount components can be done by any hobbyist with a little bit of extra effort. And I think any hobbyist will benefit greatly from making the effort to use surface mount components because it opens up so many doors in terms of taking your project from a breadboard to a finished product. Even if only you're making something for yourself, you can proudly say, I took a project off a soldless breadboard. Now here it is in a professional printed circuit board that I have created designed and had manufactured and all that is possible by anyone in their own home if you're going to build or work with with surface mount you have to have a certain amount of initial ability it really isn't for the absolute beginner one method uh, various retailers have used to combat the problem of working with surface mount devices is to offer the surface mount device on a tiny little printed circuit board itself, which we in the industry call a module. If a beginner wants to start in surface mount, he has to buy a kit where he just puts it together. And as I say, if it doesn't work, don't worry, buy another kit and put it together. And if it doesn't work, buy another kit, because they do work, but don't get frustrated because it is complicated, just buy another kit. And when it works, then you've succeeded. And although the level of technology has increased exponentially, you can harness that with self-learning or through tutorials available to make that happen. I mean, an easy example of that is the Arduino platform. Now artists and other non-electronics people are using microcontrollers, whereas 15 years ago that would have been unheard of. Microcontrollers are one of those love and hate things. The old guard really, uh, they do despise them, but they admire them because it's it just allows you to do so much, so easily, so cheaply. So the microcontrollers uh, and uh, LSIs and so forth have certainly changed our business because people le need less discrete components to do the same job. I suspect that people who become real Arduino fans end up buying everything they need on the net and bypassing us. The microcontrollers have really consolidated um, circuitry, so you don't need as much support circuitry. All the ADCs are built in, you don't have to buy the separate front-end ADCs, or you don't have to do PWM chips or something like that. It's all done in the micro, in software. UARTs are all built in, all these peripherals are built into the micro. That's really changed. You know, you can have a product which is almost literally single chip. And that's, that's fantastic from a designer point of view, from a component supplier point of view, not as good, but uh, we certainly love it. When we had to do anything that was to do with analog, all of a sudden we find that we had to put another chip in and had to convert from analog to digital and you'd add all these discrete chips. I wouldn't use those now. I can buy an Atmel chip for less than a dollar which has massive amounts of memory, is an only an 8-pin chip, doesn't need a clock, you put a power supply on it and you can run analog devices into it. They're incredible the way it works and it has certainly taken away a lot of that, but by the same token it's also created a new set of applications. And particularly with digital design, it's really a matter of finding a microprocessor with the right bells and whistles or for something that's got to go fast, the appropriate programmable logic and just use that. It is different. Nowadays, of course, I suppose if you were going to build a radio, you'd just buy a little IC that does it anyway. It may have got rid of some of the old hard wiring and things like that, but 
It certainly meant that we can do a lot of things. And yeah, all the projects now, my first base would be, okay, can we do this with a micro? And we can drag everything into the micro and then do the programming rather than using hardwired circuits. You might look back on the old days at, oh, you know, I should use a triple five timer or discrete circuitry, but microcontrollers have really revolutionized the industry on a feature performance um, aspect, no contest. If electronics retail withered up and died in Australia, the state of electronics would certainly be a lot different. Whilst I am the proprietor of this business, we'll either be in components or we won't. And I see no reason why we should discontinue our core range of components so that electronic enthusiasts have got somewhere to go and bypass. Because yes, Dick Smith have got out of electronic components. If the componentry did disappear and, and went uh, down the track of um, packaged goods, it would be impossible or very, very difficult for the kids to learn electronics. And they probably wouldn't. They'd choose something else. There'd be uh, another subject that would interest them and they'd go down that road.